Algebra 1, number 4.4. We've been talking about inequalities and the addition and multiplication properties of inequalities, and now we're going to use them together to solve some problems. So we can solve inequalities, you know, they have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to signs, or even an equal sign. We can solve them by using the addition and multiplication properties of inequalities together. We combine any like terms, and we usually use the addition property first before the multiplication one, so we can create zero pairs to simplify the equation. Then we use the multiplication property of inequalities, but remember to reverse the inequality sign when multiplying by a negative, otherwise your answer is going to be wrong. So also remember in this Algebra 1 playlist that there's links in all these video descriptions for more help. I just started doing that in this Algebra 1 playlist, okay? So here's our first one. We've got 8y plus 6 minus 3y is greater than 21. And we combine like terms on both sides of these, this inequality sign. We got an 8y and a minus 3y. That gives us 5y. We have our plus 6 and our greater than 21. Now we can use the addition property of inequality to add or subtract the same amount to each side to create a zero pair. And we do. This plus 6 minus 6 makes a zero pair right here, eliminates it, and now our equation says 5y is greater than 15. 21 minus 6 is 15. Now we can use the multiplication property of inequality to multiply the reciprocal of the coefficient to each side to create a 1. Remember, a reciprocal is an upside-down version of the other number. So if this is 5 over 1, its reciprocal is 1 fifth. This is the coefficient, remember? So now we've got 5 over 5y on this side, and that creates our 1, doesn't it? And on this side, we've got 15 over 5. See? Because we can put a little 1 down here. So we got 15 over 5 when we multiply it. We simplify this to a 3, and we get that y is greater than 3. So any number greater than 3 is a solution. And we can write it with parentheses as a, a parentheses on this side with a 3 because it doesn't include the 3, so we use parentheses, and it goes up to infinity, doesn't it? It's y is any number that's greater than 3, so it goes to infinity. And we always put a parentheses next to the infinity symbol, don't we? Okay, now let's look at this one. This one has a lot of variables that are the same, doesn't it? 10x minus 3x plus 4 is less than or equal to 6x plus 16 minus 2x. Whew, okay, so the first thing we do is combine like terms on both sides of the inequality sign, which is right there. And 10x minus 3x is 7x. And on this side of the inequality sign, we've got 6x minus 2x. That gives us 4x. See? We don't combine them together. We combine the like terms on their own side of the sign, okay? Whether it's an equal sign or, you know, an inequality sign like this. So now we've got 7x plus 4 is less than or equal to 4x plus 16. And we can take this 4x away from both sides so that we can get our variable off to one side. We've got a variable on both sides. We need to get it to just one side. So what we can do is we can either subtract 7x from both sides or we can subtract 4x from both sides. I chose to subtract 4x because if I subtract 7x, I'm going to end up with a negative number here. It's a lot easier to do this with positive numbers. So I'm going to take the smaller coefficient with x away from the larger one, okay? That's why I chose to do that. It eliminates this 4x, and now 7x minus 4x is 3x, and we got a positive coefficient here, which makes it easier. And this side's just 16. We've got 3x plus 4 is less than or equal to 16. Now we can use the addition property of inequality to add or subtract the same amount from each side to create a zero pair, and we create a zero pair again with this plus 4 minus 4. And we can eliminate this. Now our equation says 3x is less than or equal to 12. See? It's just this. So now we can use that multiplication property of inequality to multiply the reciprocal, the opposite of this coefficient right here, because he would be a 3 over 1, wouldn't he? We flip him upside down to his reciprocal is 1 third, and we multiply both sides by 1 third. We get 3 over 3x, there's our 1, and we get 12 over 3 on this side, and we simplify that to a 4. So that means x is equal to 4, because it's 
got this little bar underneath it, so it's also equal to it, and any number less than 4. So, because it includes 4, we use a bracket on this side when we write the solution, and because it's any number less than 4, it could go on to infinity into the negatives, couldn't it? So we use a negative infinity sign, and infinity signs always have a parentheses next to them, okay? So let's look at this one. This one's got a lot of variables. Look at that. So we need to combine like terms on both sides of the equation. So this side doesn't need any terms combined, does it? It's only got one variable, but this side has got plenty. It's got these uh, numbers 19 and negative 2 here that can be combined with the red, and it's got the negative 6a and the plus a in the green, doesn't it? Well, 19 minus 2 is 17, and negative 6a plus a is a negative 5a. So now we got 17 minus 5a is less than 8a minus 9. Now we can use the addition property of equality to add or subtract the same number from each side to create a zero pair. And we've got an 8a here, so I took away 8a from both sides, and I could have taken away 5a here so that we had a positive variable and coefficient, but I wanted to show you what happens when we get a negative. So I took away the bigger one this time, and that created a zero pair right here. It eliminated this plus 8a with the minus 8a, and on this side, we've got negative 13, because remember, you add the opposite, so instead of subtracting a negative, you add a positive, so it's a thir negative 13a. All right, so now we got 17 minus 13a is less than negative 9. Now we're dealing in all negatives. And we need to get this variable to one side by itself. So we need to get rid of this 17 and that 13 still. So we use the addition property of inequality again, and we subtract 17 from both sides. So now I'm getting rid of this 17 by subtracting 17, but I got to subtract 17 from that side also. We're going to add the opposite, right? So that's going to be a negative 26. Now we've got negative 13a is less than negative 26. We can multiply both sides with the multiplication property of inequality to get our 1. So this is negative 1 13th times negative 13. And this becomes a positive 13, because two negatives, over 13. We got 13 over 13a, and it's positive now. On this side, we've got a negative 26 times a negative 1 13th. It ends up becoming positive 26 over 13. When we simplify it, that's a 2. 13 plus 13 is 26. So a is greater than 2. So any number greater than 2 could be a. See? And we reversed the sign because we were multiplying by a negative. See? It was going this way, and now it's going this way. Because if we didn't reverse it, it wouldn't make any sense, would it? All right, so our solution is 2 and all the numbers into infinity that are greater than 2 as our solution, okay? Now, we also could have done it this way. We could have used the addition property of inequalities when we were at the 17 minus 5a is less than 8a minus 9. We also could have done it this way. Instead of subtracting the 8a like we did over here, we could have added the 5a, see? And, and we subtracted this one before from each side. And remember, we got the negative 13 down there, this negative 13a? Well, we also could have solved it this way. This would have been acceptable. We could have added 5a to this side and 5a to this side and created a positive 13a on this side. Then we could have added a 9 to this side and to this side and eliminated this 9. And that would have given us a positive 26 on this side and a 13a on that side, and we would have dealt with all positive numbers. So see what the difference was between taking away the larger coefficient and variable instead of adding the smaller one to this, sub, this negative one, see? So, sorry about the focus there. So now we've got positive 26 is less than 13a. And we can divide both sides by 13, this coefficient, and just get 2 is less than a. And our solution, see, is a 2 comma infinity. It's the same thing, any number greater than 2. 
any number greater than 2. So we get the same answer, we just solved it a little bit differently, and this is actually quicker. See? So as you get good at this, you'll be able to solve it quicker like this, all right? So that's how we can use the addition and multiplication properties of inequality together. And we're going to move on to the next unit, number 4.5, and we're going to talk more about inequalities, okay? I'll see you there. Bye.